step into the mystical realm of dragon cat leather, where the artistry, innovation, and captivating stories behind our one-of-a-kind leather creations are waiting to be unveiled. Join us as we embark on a journey into the heart of crafting adventures, where creativity seamlessly intertwines with craftsmanship. Today, let's delve into the enchanting world of dragon cat leather. As passionate leather artisans, we are thrilled to share the intricate artistry, groundbreaking innovation, and the mesmerizing stories woven into each of our unique creations. Hi, I'm Philip, and I'll guide you through the highlights of our journey in the year 2023, beginning with the Michigan Nordic Fire Festival, our first show, and concluding with the grand finale at the Texas Renaissance Festival, our last event of the year. Get ready to be immersed in the magic of Dragon Cat Leather. The second installment promises a continuation of enchanting narratives, unveiling the magic that transpired throughout the year. Stay tuned for more mesmerizing moments, vibrant events, and the unveiling of extraordinary creations that define the essence of Dragon Cat Leather. Your presence is not just anticipated. It's an essential thread woven into the fabric of our journey. Until then, prepare for a captivating sequel that promises to exceed expectations and leave an indelible mark on the canvas of our shared odyssey. The United Irish of Dayton, Inc. has a rich history, tracing its roots back to 1973 when various independent Irish groups in the greater Dayton area joined forces to represent Ireland at the inaugural festival. Since then, the organization has played a crucial role in this three-day multicultural event. In 2002, with the assistance of Five Rivers Metro Parks, the United Irish of Dayton took a significant step by organizing, promoting, and staffing the first United Irish of Dayton Celtic Festival. This festival has become a hallmark of Celtic culture, attracting more than 25,000 people in its initial year. Today, with the dedicated support of over 500 volunteers, the United Irish of Dayton Celtic Festival has evolved into a major annual event Held at Riverscape Metro Park in downtown Dayton, the festival now draws over 90,000 attendees each year during the last weekend of July. This success is a testament to the organization's commitment to showcasing and celebrating the richness of Celtic culture in the Dayton community. Setting up for the festival commenced at Nun Zero, um, presenting its own unique set of challenges as the day unfolded. The adventure unfolded against the backdrop of intense heat and an unrelenting sun made even more remarkable by the fact that setup commenced at 2.30 p.m. Despite the initial hurdles, Friday night graced the festival with a beautiful atmosphere. However, as Friday night transitioned into Saturday morning, a storm swept in, leaving its mark by damaging some tents. This unexpected twist added an element of unpredictability to the festival experience. Undeterred, Sunday brought scorching temperatures, soaring into the high 90s. Despite the heat, the festival goers remained undaunted, displaying enthusiasm and excitement as they reveled in the festivities. The collective spirit and joy of being outdoors and partaking in the festival created lasting memories for everyone involved. The Dublin Irish Festival, an annual celebration in Dublin, Ohio, has grown to become a monumental event since its modest beginnings in 1988. Today, it stands as the largest three-day Irish festival globally, drawing over 100,000 visitors to Kaufman Park's expansive 29-acre venue during the first weekend of August. The festival showcases a diverse array of activities across eight entertainment stages, offering a rich tapestry of Irish and other Celtic music, genealogy, culinary delights, dance, cultural exhibits, games, sports, arts and crafts, and children's activities. The Dublin Irish Festival Academy further enriches the experience by providing classes led by festival performers, delving into the intricacies of Irish music and culture. The event, backed by the city of Dublin, hosts the internationally acclaimed Columbus Fies, an Irish dance competition that coincides with the festival. The festival's origins trace back to 1988, when a few dancers and the Irish Brigade Band gathered on a tennis court. By 1992, the city of Dublin became the primary sponsor, and in 1993, attendance surpassed 10,000. Notably, on the festival's 10th anniversary in 1997, Attendees set a Guinness Book of World Records record for the largest Irish jig. The event continued to grow with 2002 marking Flogging Molly's debut concert and reaching a milestone in attendance of 70,000. In 2009, the festival exceeded 100,000 attendees for the first time. The festival set up on a challenging Friday required vehicles to be off the grounds by 30 p.m. Despite the tight schedule, the team managed to barely get the van off in time and the effort was 
complemented by wonderful neighbors engaging in art with sheep. Notably, the festival offered free Wi-Fi for vendors. Sunday's lunch featured delicious fare from Schmidt Sausage House, known for never disappointing with their food. The cream puffs were particularly outstanding. Despite the heat posing a, a challenge, the weekend turned out to be delightful, providing a wonderful experience for all involved despite the weather conditions. Mishurikan is a family-friendly, three-day anime convention held in Columbus, Ohio, taking place at the Hyatt Regency Columbus and Greater Columbus Convention Center during August. The convention features a diverse range of activities, including an artist alley, cosplay contest, dealer's room, formal ball, gaming options such as arcade, board, and video games, karaoke, masquerade, and a video contest. Established in 2006, the convention has grown since its inception, with 450 attendees in its first year. MitsureCon provides a vibrant and engaging space for anime enthusiasts to come together and celebrate their shared interests. The setup from MitsureCon took place on Thursday with us arriving at the convention center at 7 p.m. With a deadline of 11 p.m., we managed to complete 80 of the setup before heading back home. The remaining setup was finished on Friday morning. Friday proved to be a very busy day with a diverse range of vendors showcasing their talents at the convention. Saturday continued the positive trend, maintaining the momentum of a successful weekend, which was followed by a strong Sunday. The convention, with its mix of vendors and activities, provided an engaging and enjoyable experience for attendees. King Richard's Fair, held in Carver, Massachusetts, is a Renaissance fair that transports visitors to a 16th century marketplace. The fair features a wide array of attractions, including handmade crafts, a variety of foods, musicians, singers, dancers, minstrels, mimes, jugglers, whip artists, magicians, comedians, puppeteers, acrobats, animal acts, mud beggars, stilt walkers, and knights jousting on horseback. The event also includes a royal court with the fictional character King Richard. Founded in 1982 by the late Richard Shapiro and his wife Bonnie, who originally operated the fair in Bristol, Wisconsin. It was later renamed Bristol Fair when sold to Renaissance Entertainment Corporation in 1988. Bonnie and her daughter Amy Shapiro Sedley currently produce the show. King Richard's Fair is recognized as the largest and longest running Renaissance Fair in New England. We reached Massachusetts on a Wednesday. We took a few days to set up the booth. We rented a room about 30 minutes away from the fair in Wareham. We split time with another leather worker named Stephanie. Also, we hired our first employer named Jill. Um, she was an awesome worker. We had wonderful neighbors. Both were on the cast at King Richard's. Halfway through King Richard's, we had to set up at Texas Renaissance Festival. The Texas Renaissance Festival, Renfest, stands as a grand annual celebration, transporting visitors to the enchanting era of the Renaissance. Nestled in Todd Mission, Texas, just 55 miles northwest of Houston, this illustrious event emerged in 1974 on the grounds of a former strip mining site, proudly bearing the title of the nation's largest Renaissance theme park. The festival has evolved into a sprawling spectacle set on 55 acres, accompanied by over 200 acres of camping facilities for patrons seeking an immersive experience. Founded by brothers George and David Coulomb, the inaugural festival spanned a modest 15 acres with three stages featuring small improv theater groups and merchants displaying their wares on blankets. Despite its humble beginnings, the opening year saw an impressive turnout of 33,000 enthusiasts. Fast forward to 2017 and the Texas Renaissance Festival boasts approximately 500 costume actors gracing 25 stages, its extensive grounds house 350 on-site shops featuring international food purveyors, unique artisans, merchants, craft vendors, and human-powered rides. A multitude of performers roam among the guests, creating a lively and interactive atmosphere. The grand finale, known as the Queen's Royal Finale, concludes the day with a captivating display of fireworks, weather permitting. In recent years, the FF has expanded its offerings to over 400 on-site shops, becoming a cultural haven for both locals and tourists alike. The festival annually attracts over half a million visitors, reaching a peak attendance of, of 679,000 in 2016 and maintaining a robust figure of over 425,000 in 2023. With its rich tapestry of entertainment, diverse shopping experiences, and immersive cultural ambiance, the Texas Renaissance Festival continues to reign as a premier Renaissance fair in the country. Being part of the Renaissance community has truly been a rewarding experience for us. 
The warm, welcoming connections we've made have added a special touch to our journey, right? A wonderful individual we had the pleasure of meeting became a pivotal figure in our Renaissance adventure. Her introductions at the Monday Bazaar uh, sort of swap meet for Renaissance workers allowed us to make connections in the vibrant community even more. The Bazaar Aran Monday served as a hub where like-minded individuals gathered to share their crafts, ideas, and stories. It provided a unique opportunity to network, fostering connections with people who are equally passionate about Renaissance culture. The atmosphere of collaboration and camaraderie has been truly inspiring. During our time at the Bazaar, we had the privilege of meeting some important individuals. These encounters opened doors to new possibilities, collaborations, and friendships within the Renaissance community. Each connection made has contributed to the richness of our experience and has expanded our network in this fascinating world. One highlight of our journey involves our friends Jeremy and Amber from Kentucky who have a glassmaking booth at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Their artistic endeavor adds a touch of elegance and craftsmanship to the festival experience. It's not just about witnessing their creative process, but also about being part of a larger community that appreciates and celebrates diverse talents. In our upcoming blog or podcast, we're delving into the heart of our Renaissance journey, shedding light on the enchanting booth at the Texas Renaissance Festival. But that's not all. We're also excited to unveil our future plans within the Renaissance Festival circuit, whether it's expanding our presence, introducing new and captivating designs, or collaborating with fellow artisans. There's a world of possibilities awaiting. Most importantly, we want you, our valued followers, to be an integral part of this journey. We'll discuss how you can contribute, support, and participate in making our Renaissance adventures even more magical. Your involvement is key to shaping the future of Dragon Cat Leather, and we can't wait to share our aspirations with you. Stay tuned for an engaging discussion filled with stories, plans, and opportunities to join us on this incredible Renaissance ride. Thank you for joining us on this enchanting journey into the world of Dragon Cat Leather. Stay tuned for more episodes where we unravel the stories, techniques, and inspirations behind our creations. Don't forget to subscribe and explore the magic with us. Join the journey. Every two weeks, we will uh, new blog and podcast. Stay connected with us. Follow Xbribe on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, TikTok, YouTube, and our podcast. Your engagement matters. Uh, like, retweet, comment, and share our content. Embark on this creative odyssey with us, fellow adventurers. Until next time. May your imagination soar and your dreams are as boundless as the realms we explore. Stays enchanted and join us soon for more magical tales. Signing off with whimsy and wonder.